Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mojax, and today we are taking a look at the long awaited successor to the DJM 900 Nexus 2. It's the DJM A9 from Pioneer DJ. The DJM V10 released in 2020 is a mixer that I absolutely adore. It's had a degree of familiarity to it for anyone who's used other Pioneer DJ mixers, but it also pushed in some interesting new directions with a ton of very powerful effects options, 4-band EQ and a master isolator. But it definitely is what we in the UK would call a Marmite product. You either love it or hate it. There are very few people who are ambivalent about it. Like the DJM 2000 before it, the V10 was just a step too far away from a more traditional 4-channel DJM for some DJs. One thing the V10 was categorically not then was a DJM 900 Nexus 2 replacement. I'm sure almost all of you watching this will be familiar with the Nexus 2 at this point. It's been around a whopping seven years now, and so every working club, bar or festival DJ will have encountered one at some stage, even if it's not their preferred mixer of choice. So up to now, for installers using Pioneer DJ Kit, the choice was between the fairly ancient Nexus 2 and the more recent but more left field V10. And now in 2023, enter the DJM A9. I'm not sure what's going on with Pioneer DJ's naming conventions these days, I'll let you know when I figure it out. But make no mistake, this is the DJM 900 Nexus 3 in all but name. This is the mixer which aspires to be, and let's be real, will be, the new club standard worldwide. We'll start with the pricing. Street price of the A9 is set to be a touch higher than the Nexus 2 at around $2,700 in the US. Considering that has been selling at $2,400 even after 7 years on the market, I think the A9 is very fairly priced. It's a lot of money, sure, but is substantially lower than the V10, which goes for around $3,500. You may well have already spotted that the A9 is physically a bit bigger than the Nexus 2, and that is true. It's a little deeper, at 18 inches as opposed to 16.3, and a fair bit wider at 16 inches compared to the Nexus 2 at 13. It's not quite as wide as the V10, but close, despite having two less channels. There are some new features which help fill out the mixer's large frame, but it's also more spacious than the Nexus 2 when it comes to space between EQ knobs, etc. If you already found the Nexus 2 too large for your taste, you'll like this even less, but I I think most DJs will barely notice the change in use. In construction terms, I really don't have a lot to say. It's a Pioneer DJ Club mixer, their build is very much a known quantity at this point. I've played on many DJMs in my career which have been thrashed for years and years and are still trucking. This thing is solid, end of story. Where the A9 certainly surpasses the Nexus 2 is when it comes to sound quality. That was the best sounding mixer the company had made at the time of release, but has since been surpassed by the V10 and other mixers in their line. The Nexus 2 still sounds respectable today, but to me it does sound a bit digital compared with the V10 if that makes sense. Digital audio technology has simply moved on since 2016, and I think the V10 sounds absolutely superb. Specs-wise, the A9 is right up there with the V10, with ESS technology, AD converters, a 96kHz sampling rate and 32-bit conversion on the outputs. From my testing, I do believe it matches the V10 in quality terms, but I feel like the voicing is slightly different. Where the V10 seems to aim for complete accuracy and transparency, the A9 sounds a touch brighter in the top end, but pleasingly so. Overall, it's just a touch more punchy all round, with a profile closer to the Nexus 2, which makes sense to me considering the multitude of situations this mixer is designed for. The Phono preamps are very good too, far superior to those found on older Pioneer DJ gear, and with enough headroom to accommodate a wide range of cartridges. I'd be perfectly happy playing vinyl sets on the A9. I fed a variety of sources into the mixer, including turntables and CDJs via both the line and digital inputs, and everything sounded great. The digital to analog conversion is excellent too, and that brings me to something pretty important. As well as record box, which was always a given, the DJM A9 also has support for Serato DJ Pro with Club Kit right out of the gate. There's not much to actually demonstrate with that, there are no dedicated software controls on the mixer, although the control surface can be MIDI mapped if you want. But as you can see, it just works great, and as Serato software is the only one which is locked down to approved interfaces only, it means you can use the DJM A9 with all types of DJ software straight away from launch. The A9 features a pair of Q circuits as first seen back on the DJM Tour 1. Headphones A is positioned just like on the Nexus 2 with the controls and sockets on the left side of the top panel. You have a button for Link Q and Split Q and a Q Master Blend knob. Then over on the right you have controls for Headphones B, which are slightly smaller but with the same level of control available. 
Like headphones A, B has both sizes of headphone jack, and those are found on the front panel. Correspondingly, above each channel now resides a pair of Q buttons, one for each headphone circuit. This is a superb addition for DJs performing back-to-back -back sets, offering both DJs the ability to cue exactly what and when they like. A really welcome feature in a pro environment. It's hard to miss the big antenna sticking out of the back of the DJI MA9, and that is for two things. Firstly, you now have the ability to connect devices to the mixer via Bluetooth. Now, I know some people will turn their noses up at this, but I think it's a cool addition. A lot of venues I've performed at, they play their daytime background music through their DJ mixer via an iPad and an aux cable, which obviously works, but having the ability to do the control of that from, say, behind the bar, wire-free, has to be a real bonus. Plus, whilst the latency, even with Bluetooth 5.0, is too big to be practical for DJing, there are absolutely some benefits for DJs to having that feature too, playing beats for a rapper off of their phone, for example. Setting it up is easy, you pair your device to the mixer and then any channel can be assigned to Bluetooth using the input selector knobs. Simple and straightforward. The second feature which uses the antenna is Wi-Fi. That's not for connecting the mixer to Pro DJ Link wirelessly, that would be kind of pointless as the CDJs need hard wiring anyway. Instead, the Wi-Fi is used to connect to your router and then to a new iPad app called Stagehand. I tried an unfinished beta version of the app, but it was already easy to see just how useful it could be. It's not for DJs, it is for venue sound engineers to be able to monitor everything that's going on with the A9 and even step in and adjust settings on the fly, pulling down the master attenuator for DJs who constantly redline the mixer, for example. I think the app is a fantastic idea and it works great, but there's one big issue with it. It costs $20. The idea that Pioneer DJ would try and squeeze an extra 20 bucks out of businesses or individuals who've already spent the best part of three grand on a mixer for a utility application, no less, is frankly absurd. It should be free. I do want to highlight the display on the A9. It's much bigger than the one found on the Nexus 2 and is now full colour as opposed to black and white. And it contains some pretty powerful stuff inside the utility menu. So I know that looking through menus is not the most exciting thing, but the menu system here on the A9 is such a step up from previous generations like the Nexus 2 that I do think it's worth taking a look at. I'll do it as briefly as I can. To access the menu system, you hold down the quantize button until you get into the menu and you can see it's full color, you know, very clear, very easy to read. The controls are all done with the effects controls just below and you've got a little bit of information there to show you what each button is gonna do so you don't get lost in the menu. You've got mixer settings. So these are like the main utility mixer settings. We can do balance of the mixer. We can do the master out. We can do the peak limiter. We can attenuate it. If we've got DJs that are getting a bit out of control with their levels, we can attenuate the master output and we can choose between mono or stereo. Same thing applies to the digital master out as well. And you say so you've got separate settings for the digital output. You can again choose peak limiter, mono stereo, and you can choose the sampling rate and the reference level, etc. for your digital output. Booth output, again, we have the attenuator. Again, we have the mono stereo switch. We also have what is one of my favorite features on the whole mixer, which is one I absolutely love. And that is mute when mic is on. And that effectively, turns the DJI MA9 into a broadcast console because that's one of the, for me, one of the defining features of a broadcast mixer that you'd use in a radio studio is the fact that when you turn on the mics, the monitor speakers cut out. So you don't get that feedback loop of stuff going back into from, you know, you've got the music playing and the mic going and it doesn't go back into the microphone and it just makes for a much cleaner sound. It's how it's done in broadcast. It's how it's done in radio. People wear headphones, they listen and monitor in headphones. So when the mics are live, the speakers in the studio cut out. That is something you can do right here on the DJM A9. So for me, that is just, it's a, it's a wonderful addition. You know, you've already got a great mic strip over there on the left-hand side of the mixer, but with that in there as well, that makes this pretty much the perfect mixer for say a self-op small studio in a radio station where DJs are generally DJing. You know, they're actually kind of mixing and so forth. That makes this absolutely a superb choice for that kind of situation. Then we have the mic options themselves. We have mic to peak limiter. We can send it to the booth peak limiter and the mic to record out will exclude the mic. So that way you can just record without the mic on the record output, which is really nice if you're trying to capture your sets. And the phantom lock, so you can lock the phantom power so it can't be turned on by accident, you know, and, and start feeding out 48 volts to a microphone that can't handle uh, phantom power. So that's great. My settings is much more for the DJ, 
This is what you will use so you can load and save your settings and your BeatFX settings and so on. You can store them. Um, and that is basically so you would set them up in record box and when you load up with pro dj link your usb stick or sd card will talk to the mixer and say here are mojax's settings i can load them up so that is a fantastic way of working it saves you a lot of time because there are a lot of options within here that you might want to make use of so for example if i'm using in ear monitors and i want to have uh, split queue enabled as soon as i plug into the mixer i can have that i can choose split queue mono stereo whatever i want to and same for headphones b the beat effects quantize personally i leave that on all the time so i'd want that on mic low cut on for the mc or oh, you can have it off mic effects echo beats that's when you're doing the echo effects on the mic so i can choose between the well let me turn that on so there's one beat and there's half a beat and there's an eighth of a beat so you have those options there they live in this setting utility again we go back uh, the talk over there is standard and advanced talk over you can choose the level of it as well then we have midi settings so if you're using the mixer to interface with software on your computer you can choose the midi channel and you can choose the button type so if you're mapping the control surface of the a9 to your software you can choose what kind of options you got there then we have brightness so your own custom brightness you can have both the display and the actual leds on the mixer choose the brightness of those that's entirely up to you that's your setting that as a dj you can just load them straight up and then we have the same for all of the beat effects so we have the beat value so i can have it whenever i switch over to delay on the beat effects it automatically goes to a half beat for example and then it will choose the effect frequency for me as well so i don't have to touch that when i when i choose delay i know that when i'm using delay i always want to have the low turned off and i want to have the mid and high turned on so now when i switch to delay that will be so and that will apply to all of these different ones yeah we've got the beat value and we've got the effects frequency that will apply and so yeah it's different from older stuff in that now you do have different options for each effect so it won't automatically just stay on the low will always be off when i switch to a new effect but i prefer that because as i say in the demo you know some of the times i want the full frequencies some i only want the mid and high some i only want maybe the mid or just the high so you can choose that for each of those and then save them if you haven't set them up in record box you can then save that back to your usb stick or sd card or whatever from the mixer as well so really nice lots of settings for the dj to use general settings we have the wi-fi and we have the lan which i've kind of spoken about already but you can see setting up the wi-fi is pretty simple you either connect by wps or you can connect by password so you can choose the ssid and then using the buttons you can type in quite easily it was easier than i thought it would be to type in a password you've only really got to do it once for your wi-fi and then finally my, my mic now will turn off when i hit this but you'll see this sound check is a way that sound engineers can send out test tones to the venue through various different outputs i'll just show it to you and it'll just make me mute because that's what it does So yeah, as you can see, you know, it's just a really nice intuitive menu system. I'm really happy using it. It does interface very well with like the Stagehand app and also with your own personal settings that are coming from Rekordbox or you're sending them back to Rekordbox, whatever you want to do. It is just, as I said, a step above the generations before like the Nexus 2. As with the Nexus 2, the A9 features a pair of USB ports allowing easy changeovers for computer users. But there's one big change. The A9 has both USB-B and USB-C sockets on each port. To me, this is the perfect solution. You aren't being forced to change to something different, but if you'd prefer to use the new USB standard, you absolutely can. Unexpected and awesome, and I'd like to see this on more hardware in the future. Staying with connectivity for a minute, there's literally nothing to argue with here. Each of the four channels has separate RCA inputs for phono and line, as well as an RCA digital input. They can be switched between those three plus Bluetooth, computer A and B, effects return and USB return on a per channel basis. Very flexible indeed. The outputs are comprised of master one on XLRs, master two on RCAs and a record output also on RCAs. There's a digital master output too. I am a little disappointed that the A9 doesn't feature an AES slash EBU digital output as found on the DJM Tour 1. That would have been a really nice touch for big festivals and the like, but I do appreciate that would have taken up a fair bit of space. The booth output is on balance jacks, as is the Pioneer DJ standard, and this now features high and low EQ controls next to the volume pot, which is a feature I love to see. 
allowing DJs to tune what they hear in the booth without affecting the main output. The send and return loop is on unbalanced quarter inch jacks and there are two mic inputs, mic 1 on a combo XLR and jack socket which can provide phantom power and mic 2 on a balanced jack. I'll talk more about the mics later. And of course there is an Ethernet socket for connecting the mixer to your Pro DJ Link setup, essential for getting the best out of a full CDJ and DJM rig. I'd always prefer it if Pioneer DJ was to include built-in Ethernet hubs on their mixers like they did with the DJM2000 and the Tor 1 as it does simplify things, but I accept that space is at a premium here. One small but notable thing, the power socket is now of the lockable IEC type. Not something I'm bothered about in the studio, but in high pressure performance settings, a very welcome addition. We'll talk EQ now as there have clearly been some changes to the voicing there. Like older models, you have the choice of isolator mode with full kill and EQ mode which cuts by 26 dB. Both modes boost by 6 dB. The main change seems to be in the frequency cutoff at the high end, with the high EQ cutting a bit further than on the Nexus 2. I'll demonstrate it to you, but ultimately I think it's a positive change, which even though it's 3 not 4 band, will appeal to DJs who prefer the EQ on zone mixers and the V10. The changes seem more noticeable in ISO mode, I never used that on the Nexus 2, I always preferred EQ mode instead, and so I'd be much more inclined to use ISO mode on the A9. The up faders are upgraded from the Nexus 2 and now match those on the V10. They feel a little heavier and therefore smoother and allow for more precise control when blending. You have the standard three-way curve adjustment and overall I do think they're a big improvement over the previous model. The crossfader is also worthy of note. It's a new generation of Magvel fader with a reinforced build, more sensors and a bumper arrangement more akin to the Magvel Pro fader found in the S11. I had a love-hate relationship with the fader in the Nexus 2. It was very precise with a clean cut, but I found the bumpers a bit clunky and the tension just a touch too loose for my taste. On the A9, the new Magvel feels and performs much like the Magvel Pro, with the tension dialed up just a little, which is basically how I have mine set on the S11. With a three-position curve control and a tight, clean cut-in when set to sharp, DJs who like to get down on the cut have nothing to fear from this mixer. And so with that, let's wrap up with a real-time demo of the performance features found on the DJM A9. So there is a fair bit of stuff on this mixer which only makes sense to demonstrate to you in kind of a live fashion. So I'm going to do that now and I'm going to try and not take too long about it. But yeah, some of it you just kind of need to hear in action. Firstly, I'm using a condenser microphone. I'm making use of that 48 volt phantom power. The mic is a bit too far from my voice, so don't necessarily judge the, the microphone preamps According to what you're hearing here, they are very good preamps. You get a mic set up properly, close to your mouth. Yeah, they sound really, really good. But we have the two inputs, both with their own level controls. Then we have a shared two-band EQ, so plus or minus 12 dB on the high and the low for both. Below that, we have the torque over. Lots of options for the torque over inside the preferences and the settings utility. And then we've got the effects below that. So we've got three effects, two of which I really kind of like and one which I'm not so sure about. The first is echo. You can see when I turn it on, nothing happens. If the parameter knob is at 12 o'clock, it doesn't start doing anything until I start to turn it clockwise or anti-clockwise. And now you can hear we have an echo. And the decay time goes up the more you turn the knob and same on it. Low echo as well. Really, really digging that. I know a lot of people who use the Echo on like their S11 or S9 or whatever on their live streams and it does sound really, really good. So that's superb. Then we have Megaphone, which is kind of a, it's like a crush and a filter 
all at once to give you that kind of megaphone effect. It does affect the volume slightly, so you might have to crank things. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting one. Not something I'd use all the time, but it's it's pretty cool. And then we have pitch, which I just, I don't know anyone who uses this. If you use this, let us know in the comments below what you're using it for. Because for me, I've never, ever in my DJ career had a desire to sound like this. Not once, not a single time have I thought this would be a good idea. Likewise, I've never wanted to sound like this either. I just, I never have. And I guarantee you, I never ever. Is it a karaoke thing? I, d I don't know. But anyway, it's there. Like, if you use it, great. If you don't use it, it's not going to do you any harm having it there. But the echo, yeah, fantastic. Below that, we have reverb. And the reverb, you can switch on or off. Nothing happens. It's a minimum. So minimum is zero. Nothing's happening. Turn it up to max. And you have reverb going on as well. That is awesome. I like having reverb there. That is a rarity on a DJ mixer. And you can combine echo, echo and, reverb and reverb at the same nice. time. And even more so, you can also add in the beat effects because we can select the beat effects over on the right hand side and send those to the mic. So now we have the beat effects. Let's change over to, let's say, spiral. So now I can activate the spiral, 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 spiral on my voice. My voice, my voice and I can use the X pad to do some really squirrely effects helix as well helix 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 and you can also have reverb and echo at the same time and you might be thinking okay these are really just only going to be useful for like broadcast you know streaming radio etc but actually you know my favorite drummer bass mc of all time conrad uses delays and reverbs and stuff on his MCing, and that is simply terrific so there is a place for some of this in the club. Absolutely. This is not just a broadcast feature. It is very good for broadcast. I mean, this overall is a fantastic mic strip. I think probably the most advanced mic strip we've ever seen on a DJ mixer. Um, the only thing I do wish is that it did have some slightly more broadcast style effects, like, for example, a compressor or maybe a noise gate, a limiter, something like that. That would really even level it up further still for broadcast. But overall, a very accomplished mic section. I'm a big fan of it. There's less to talk about when we get over to the sound color effects because, frankly, we've seen pretty much all of this before. It's basically the same as the 900 Nexus 2. That fundamentally is the point of much of this mixer. If you're comfortable with those effects on the Nexus 2, you'll be comfortable on here. One big upgrade is the addition of center lock. Normally with uh, you know, the sweeps, you can just go up and down and go right through, and that, that's fine. All works well. But it, sometimes, and I've had it happen to me, not that often, but I've had it happen, where you can be doing... Like a sweep back up from a filter, you go back to zero and you maybe over, overshoot slightly and you kind of lose the impact as you're coming back in of that first beat or something because you've gone slightly too far. Well, with center lock, that's no longer possible because you turn that on and you can't go past 12 o'clock. It just stops you. It's like a physical stop that won't allow it to go any further. Now, as soon as you take any pressure off it, it will then let you go through. So it's not like it's completely preventing you from doing all the way around if you want, but in general, I would just leave this on because it's simply a physical barrier that stops you. Up we go, same the other direction. You flick it up and it just goes, it stops at 12 o'clock. And it's, I think it's actually kind of a genius feature. When I heard about it, I was like, well, what's the point of that? But actually, it's genius, and I would definitely leave it on myself. I wouldn't need, feel the need to turn it off in any way. Fantastic. Otherwise, these color effects, they're all, we've heard them before, right? Space, parameter control, we've heard these before. On the 900 Nexus 2, nothing wrong with that because people love those sound color effects. Dub echo, very familiar sound. You know, it's post fader, parameter control, yeah, all very familiar. Crush, likewise. Noise, of course, a big one used by like James Hype and so on. Etc. The filter. Again, the parameter control, you can have it howling. Or you can have it minimal. 
not quite as minimal as on the V10. I mean, that's one thing I would have loved to have seen on here is a, a different kind of filter, more like the V10, because I just love the V10 filter, but I appreciate that's not the target audience of this mixer, so I, I get it, it's fine. Uh, this is the one that people are comfortable with and familiar with, and so I'm sure Pioneer DJ didn't want to mess with that. The one that has changed is Sweep. Now, this is always the one that I preferred over the filter on the 900 Nexus 2. I just like the way it goes through. So rather than using a high pass filter, I would always use the sweep. Now previously there was like a gate effect when you turn that anti-clockwise on the 900 Nexus 2, but now it's a downward sweep instead. I don't think that was a very popular effect, that kind of gate effect, but it might have been. Again, let us know in the comments if you use that all the time. I certainly don't think it was a hugely popular one and I don't miss it for one second. I love the sweep. Typically when I'm using the Nexus 2, and now when using this, I will leave it on sweep all the time. I just think that sounds really, really good. So we move from there over to the beat effects. Again, pretty familiar stuff. They've changed the way you select the channels now. You don't have the knob to turn. Instead, you have buttons. So one, two, three, four, mic, crossfader A, crossfader B, and master. So it's typical Pioneer DJ stuff. Let's go on to an echo. And if we turn the echo on, if we set it to channel two, we've got tails when we drop the up fader, but nothing when we cut the cross fader. So you'll need to, if you want to get the tails on the cross fader, you have to sign it to cross fader A. And then we get tails on the cross fader as well. That's uh, something to just bear in mind. I always leave it set to cross fader A or B because I'm a cross fader user. And then we've got the level depth control. We have the time knob. We have the actual selector for all the effects. We have the effects frequency switches as on the Nexus 2. So you can choose to affect low, mid, and high, whatever combination of those you wish. Above that, we have the tap control. So we can also do a manual adjustment of the BPM. But of course, because I'm running Pro DJ Link here, if I have Pro DJ Link all set up properly and networked correctly, then it will instantly track the BPM of the CDJ, the master CDJ in this case, because I'm using the crossfader, it will simply track that BPM instantly without any fuss at all. So that's great. And of course we have the quantize button here so you can make sure that everything is quantized right onto the beat. One of the great advantages of using Pro DJ Link is you get that kind of linked BPM functionality throughout your effects, and that applies to the echo on the mic and all of that as well. All of that will be nicely quantized to the BPM perfectly for you. Now, we've got the X pad here, and we can see we have different options below the main effects. We can choose the beat of the delay. Let's turn on a one beat delay. We can also then use the X pad to kind of chop into that. And it'll go back to the one beat. Lots more triplet options now in the BPM, in the beat division. None of which I will use very much, but some of you might want to. Same for the echo. And what you might notice there is, as I've changed between delay and echo, the effects, the effects frequencies have actually changed. So you see I've gone to echo and it stayed with just the mid and high selected. If I go back to delay, then it's got all three selected. And that's really cool, because that means you can save that in the settings, and actually each effect that you select, you've got your own personal effects frequency settings chosen there as well. Love that. Yeah, the echo always sounds great. Then we go up to ping pong delay, which is kind of a panning delay. I will point out as well, we have the LEDs to show you which channels are selected. So if I put that channel onto Crossfader A, that is now selected as well, etc. So we have all that set, you know, it's kind of visual. You can see what's going on. Go up to Spiral and this one, we get that running. And now the X pad is like the tape delay time as part of the spiral effect. So it's like a secondary parameter. Love spiral, very kind of sideways, very organic sounding. 
Helix, the same thing. Tape delay time there. So you can adjust the beat division and you can adjust the delay time, the tape delay time. Reverb. The secondary parameter on the X-pad is like a filter. I know lots of people make a lot of use of the uh, DJM 900 Nexus 2 reverb and yeah, similar on here. This one's superior really. I love the sound of that. Then we come around to like Flanger, the good old favorite. And here the X-pad is changing the LFO time. Same on Phaser. And the auto filter. Yeah, the X-Pad is not really something I used very much on the Nexus 2, but I, I feel like I would use it a lot more on here. Triplet filter. A bit more kind of offbeat, maybe a bit more funky the way that works. Again, you can change the LFO time. Get some very dope effects coming out of that. Transform, of course. Sounds great with melodies, etc. Less so with rhythms like we're doing here, but yeah, in general, transform is a very old, familiar effect. There are a lot of things you could just affect the mid and just say do a melody or whatever. Yeah, great effect. Roll, again. So now we've got a one beat roll and we can use the X-pad to kind of chop that up. And then there is the triplet roll, which I'm going to say is basically the James Zabila setting. Um, I'm sure there are other DJs out there who will find creative ways to use this. Basically, James Zabila does like these kind of triplet delay roll things where he transitions from one BPM to another. There's too much maths involved for me to be doing that in a DJ set, but some of you more creative mixing DJs will definitely come up with ways to use this. And that functions in the same way again you can chop it up with the beat division on the x pad a cool effect just not one that i'm probably ever going to use and then we have mobius which first appeared on the ddj 1000 some years ago and it's a great effect you can get some don't need any audio for it it's just basically a permanently rising tone it's kind of fooling you into thinking that it's permanently rising up and up and up and you can change the waveform shape on here so you can go from square through to sawtooth, through to triangle. And it's a great effect for running over like build-ups and drops and transitions and so on. One of those effects that would be really easy to overuse but is still a really good fun effect. Now we're not done, let's keep on going. There's more effects up here. We have the multi IO section up here, which is basically used for your send, your external hardware, etc. We have a bunch of options here. We can choose which channel is gonna be sent from. So in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, again, mic, crossfader A, B, and master. The insert source is for return or USB. We'll get to USB in a second, but you can run a physical, like an RMX 1000 in on the insert and use that as an insert effect, or you can use it with regular like guitar pedal effects, that kind of thing. I used it with my EFX 500 and that worked perfectly well. You've got the send level there. So it is a pretty comprehensive send and return system. The return you can send back in via one of these channels. So any one of these four channels, I can switch it to return and then the sort it will come back in and it will go into that channel. I can then EQ what's coming back in. So if I've got say a delay going on or a, you know an echo or something, I can EQ that return. I can put the sound color effects on that return. Um, I can even put the beat effects on it. So you have tons of options with the send and return in a physical sense, but we also have the USB insert as well. So I'm gonna turn that on because what I've got connected to that is my iPad running the RMX 1000 app from Pioneer DJ. So I'm gonna start playing music through it. I've assigned it to channel two. And let's choose one of the features. Let's choose high pass echo. Can do the release effects, do the cut and add. 
And this is a really cool app, this RMX 1000 app. I do wish it was slightly redesigned in terms of the touchscreen interface, but the actual performance of it is very, very good. And you're not tied to using this, you can use anything you like. And that again is picking up the BPM from the player. So it's 124 right now. If I move that up immediately, it's gone to 131 and then it down to 116. So it will track the BPM. And you can use that, yeah. Any app that supports, you know, a, a core audio interface you'll be able to use with this. And you could do that previously with the 900 Nexus 2 as well. It's not something I've seen many people using live, but yeah, definitely the potential is there for some very advanced effect stuff indeed. So there you go, my thoughts on the DJM A9 from Pioneer DJ. When I'm reviewing products, I tend to have like a virtual word cloud floating around in my head. During the process of reviewing the A9, the big word in the middle of that word cloud was the word safe. And that's not a bad thing, right? This is not a DJM V10, a mixer that I absolutely adore. This is not doing very unusual, different things, new workflows, etc., for effects. This, that stuff, I love it, right? And it inspires me creatively. It really gets me going. That's not what this mixer is about. This is a safe bet, a safe bet for Pioneer DJ who will not alienate their massive customer base. It's a safe bet for installers and people who are, you know, specking out booths and festivals, etc., because they know that the vast majority of DJs will be completely comfortable on the A9. And it's also a safe bet for those DJs because this thing has that familiarity that goes right back through the lineage of DJM four channel mixers, right from the DJM 500 through the six, the eight, the 900, the Nexus two, and now the A9. If you were comfortable on a DJM 500 20 years ago, you're gonna be perfectly comfortable on the A9 today. And that's the point of this product. It isn't a V10, it isn't trying to be something different. This is the successor to the 900 Nexus 2. And from that point of view, it is absolutely successful because it's much better than a 900 Nexus 2. When it comes to sound, connectivity, the way you control effects, etc., it's just a better mixer. But it is incredibly comfortable and incredibly safe. And in the case of this product, Saying it's safe is absolutely no criticism at all. Pioneer DJ have done the job they intended to do and they've pulled it off with aplomb. In the comments this week, I'd love to hear from you about the best and worst booth you've ever played at. From my point of view, the worst one, I'll never forget it. It was a venue in Newcastle I did for, I had a little residency there. They had a broken Zone 42 and a single CDJ 800. So I was instant doubling on Serato all night long because, yeah, just one CDJ. That was not a fun experience. The best booth I've ever played in, I was lucky enough many years ago to play in Fabric London. And of course, yeah, it kind of goes without saying that's one of the finest DJ booths in the world. So yeah, let us know your experiences of the best and worst booths in the comments below. Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.